So we're going to start out with, you know, in talking about acceleration concepts and philosophy and errors. You know, the first thing to think about is, you know, where do we look? You know, where are the potholes? Um, you know, where, where do we see errors um, originate? Where, how do we see them accumulate? And then from there, you know, once, once we know those things, then we can get an idea of, okay, these are where the errors are originating from. These are um, what the, error, the big errors that we see. And then based on that, how do we evaluate those issues and those problems? So to me, it's important to understand that because if you don't, if you don't have a philosophy and understanding of, of acceleration, one, but then two, looking at how those errors come to pass, how will they originate from, it really makes it difficult to, to fix things because then you're kind of just shooting haphazardly. And so I try to make sure that when I'm, when I'm coaching acceleration, I'm evaluating acceleration, when I'm talking to my student athletes and, and other coaches that I work with about acceleration, that we understand the philosophy that we're working from. And so um, that, that's really important. That's really important. I'm having, okay. So with that, the things that we're going to try to adhere to, the, the main things philosophically that we're gonna look at because what are the themes, what are the KPIs, which are key performance indicators, the things that lead to success in acceleration and race modeling, um, we're gonna look at pushing, you know, and we're gonna go into each of these and talk about them in much more detail as we go through this talk, as we go through this lecture um, presentation. So pushing. Pushing is something that's really important in acceleration. If the athlete's not pushing, then they're floating or they're casting or they're pulling or doing something else. But the pushing is really important because it's what allows the athlete to generate momentum and develop force. Okay, so we'll, we'll say that for now. Posture is the next thing. Posture is really important because it aligns the body in a, or the postural evaluation, I should say, is important because we want to look at posture in such a way that, and, and to ask ourselves, is the body aligned in such a way to help us achieve our goals? And so depending on what your goals are in acceleration will, will help you to see, will help you to look at what type of posture you're going to advocate for your student athletes, for your athletes. So um, certain postures will lead to, different postures will lead to different outcomes. And so we're going to, um, we're going to advocate for a posture that allows one to push well, that allows some of these other KPI factors that are listed below and above to, to come to fruition. So posture is an important element that we're going to look for in acceleration. And um, we'll, we'll come back to that and you'll see it again and again. Okay, projection and flight, they're kind of tied together. But in acceleration, I want to see projection, meaning that I want to see the athlete displace or move their body um, a, aggressively and forcefully um, from one step to the next. There should be some projection of the whole body. So if you take short and quick steps and you get your feet on the ground really fast, that's the antithesis of projection in my mind. And so as we talk through this, um, that's going to be a key performance indicator. Did the athlete project? You know, was there good posture? Was there pushing? So these things all go together. So they synthesize and they work together to create effective acceleration. If you don't have projection in the, in the acceleration process, it creates many problems that will lead to um, poor races. So that's one of the things we'll look at when we get to the race analysis to say, you know, were these things happening? Was there projection? Okay, flight. Um, flight is again tied to projection, but it, it, it's, it's different in my mind in that we're looking to see was there sufficient airtime? Is there sufficient airtime in the run from the first step throughout the rest of the run, throughout the whole acceleration process. So, um, so is there flight in the athlete's acceleration? Okay, and, and I'm going to um, put forth that flight is a crucial and important aspect of acceleration and something we're going to really talk with our athletes about and really, and really ask them to do. And, and when we analyze the acceleration, it's gonna be, if, it, if it's present or not present, that's gonna be a very big, key performance indicator, and we'll go through that a little bit later. Um, patience and, I missed something. Patience and rhythm, okay, patience and rhythm. So patience and rhythm are important in acceleration because so many times 
we see athletes and coaches advocating a rushed process, um, a dysrhythmic process. And so if you listen to Coach Telez, if you talk to him or watched him um, talk or work with, work with athletes, there's a very specific rhythm. He wants it to build gradually throughout the acceleration. So whether you're on a high jump runway, a long jump runway, um, or running 100 meters or a four by four, there should be a rhythm to the acceleration that's fairly uniform. So if you see big jumps in rhythm, or you see rhythm stall out, um, that those are things that, that hinder performance. If you feel like the athlete is rushing in acceleration, to me that hinders performance. Um, and so patience and rhythm are things that are very much tied together in the, that we should be looking for in the acceleration process that leads to consistency of good runs, okay? Finally, a key performance indicator that we'll talk about is rising. You know, is the athlete rising as they run? Um, and so as they're, as they're moving, are we seeing the whole body, the whole unit move up and forward throughout the run? Okay, now let me, um, let me stop for a second and say that many of these things that I'm talking about that I'm advocating that have come from the Thales half kind of philosophy background um, might be counterintuitive. You know, they might be things that don't sound like lead to fast running. So even though we're talking about patience and projection and posture and pushing, at the end of the day, we want to run fast. Okay, we want to run fast. And, and, and what I'm positing is that the way to run consistently fast and stay healthy is to adhere to these principles and to adhere, adhere to these themes. And so you won't hear me talk about um, things that really get in the way of that. I won't advocate, I won't coach um, in ways that go against these types, of, these types of themes, if that makes sense. Okay, so from there, we're gonna get into the specifics and start to go through some of the errors that I see in acceleration. So first thing, you know, errors in block setup, you know, errors in block setup. So one of the things that, uh, that I, I, I watch a lot of people do acceleration, um, either with or without blocks, we're going to talk about blocks for now, but the same principles apply if you're going on the flat. So one of the things that I see is that people just set up their blocks haphazardly. If you look, the, look at the picture down in the lower right, um, the, the gill set, those blocks are set, you know, parallel to each other. You know, and obviously, you know, most of us wouldn't do that. But I go to meets and see setups that are not that, not that dissimilar to that, where the spacings are only a few inches apart. Okay, if we look at the, the setup in the blue track, all those block spacings are pretty close together. And so we, sometimes I look at people, and unless someone is so, their talent level is so much higher than the athlete I coach, I can say, shoot, we've got an advantage. I watch how they set up their blocks. The way that you set up your blocks and the spacing is crucially important to uh, achieving some of the principles, some of the things that we talked about in the previous slide. You know, whether or not you can push, whether or not you can project, um, whether or not you can be patient, the block spacing and the setup can have a big effect on that. So we're not gonna, when, you know, I, many athletes come to me with, with very wild block settings. I'm like, I look at them, as, you know, the first day, that we do block starts and I look and I say, what is that? Oh, that's my block setting coach. And they say, I go, why? I go, well, it feels comfortable. And I tell them like, you know, right now, initially, I don't care about your comfort. You know, I want to set you up in a, so that you have the possibility to achieve those other goals. So we're going to do things that are biomechanically sound. We're going to do things that are, that are more, that tie into good motor learning principles and to set us up so that we can achieve those goals that we talked about earlier in the, um, in, the, in the lecture, okay? So blocks set up and on your marks, they kind of go together. So when you set up your blocks, if you look at the picture of, that's a, uh, a drawing of, of Carl Lewis, <clears throat> you can see a few things. And the, and the block setup, the way that his blocks are set up allows for these things to happen. And so the first thing that you see is that his hands are under his shoulders, okay? The hands are under the shoulders, okay? The next thing that you see is that um, the back knee is a few inches in front of the front foot. And the back knee is a few inches in front of the front foot. If you look at the front knee, 